And the third quarter about ready to get underway. Looking at the game for Hayward, nine points, and he's chalked up one three-pointer on the day as well. Now, a lot of times, he's one of those players who can get hot and stay hot from the three-point line. So I look for him to continue to search for shots out there. So here's Burks. While we've got a moment, let's set the floor. Brought to you by Gatorade, all fueled up for the second half. So on the floor for Utah. Pairing up in the backcourt, Trey Burke and Alec Burks. Hayward three and Favors the four. And it's Cantor in at the center position. Favors can't get it to go. Boston leading by nine. The drive by Green. Good. And it's Rondo who picks up the assist. Rondo's got six assists now in the game. The Jazz shooting pretty well at 46% from the floor. Burke kicks to Cantor. Little turnaround, rebounded by the Celtics. Can't get a much better look than that, though. Sure can't, not one you'd expect him to miss there. You know, it wasn't just that the Jazz were struggling against the rest of the West. They were getting punished regularly by teams in the East as well. And Despite that, this is a young team that I think has a chance to, to get better rather quickly. Now here's Hayward. There's the feed to Cantor. Hayward dishes to Burke. Shot clock at six. Passes it to Hayward. The three. That is good. Hayward for three. Hayward's got 12 points in the game. The Jazz did have a lot of trouble with the East, even though teams in the East were more willing to play at the Jazz's uh, preferred pace. Yeah, but when you don't have a dynamic offense, it doesn't matter what pace you play at, and that missing ingredient is what hampered the Jazz against all teams, including the East. Here's Burke after Jared Selinger's bucket. Burke the pass to Cannon. The dish to Hayward. The pick gave him all the room he needed, and he knocks down the J. Hayward's got five points now in the quarter. Celtics leading by eight. Outside Rondo. Mass with a screen for Rondo. Feeds it to Green. Rondo with it. With the floater. Here's Bass, and blocked. Rondo against Hayward. Dishes it to Burke. Here's Cantor. Here's Favors. And a good offensive board. And he gets the bucket. Favors has got six. Boy, the D has to show a little more fight on the interior than they did on that trip. They've got a battle inside. Well, this game has been tough, Clark. I mean, they're getting after it, and I think they're starting to run a little bit low on energy, possibly. A touch over two and a half minutes of basketball played here in the third quarter. Rondo kicks to Bass. He feeds it to Sullinger. Outside, Green launches it, and the Celtics hit again from deep. That's pretty much been the norm for them, getting their points off assists and great ball movement. 
Nice rhythm and flow for this team. Tremendous communication and alertness. And the Jazz call time here. He did not look too happy about some of the things he saw on the court. So I would expect some changes here. I think it's the right move, quite honestly. I mean, they just didn't look sharp or at their best out there. So take the time out and give yourself a chance to regroup. And now we're three minutes into the third quarter of play. Burke kicks to Favors. Hayward dishes to Favors. Can't connect from short range. More often than not today, those shots have not dropped for him. Rondo passes to Selinger. And so he earns a trip to the line. Official saw the contact, and he'll shoot two. Jared Sullinger last season unleashed as a scorer with Boston embarking on their rebuilding project. He got more opportunities in the paint. He started to fire away from deep. Uh, his shooting percentages just weren't great, but I thought it was an excellent season for Sullinger exploring his game and trying to expand it. The first one falls. And Sullinger was given the green light from long range. He's got a nice shooting stroke for a big guy, and the Celtics are hoping he can become a bit like Kevin Love. But he managed only mid-20s from behind the arc. Um, so the experiment called into question by some. Both free throws good from Selinger. And Selinger got off to a hot start, but Steve Hand and wrist injuries may have hampered his shooting just a bit. Yeah, with his high skill level, I would expect him to improve his shooting with time, You know, even if he's less of a focal point for their offense. Now, here's Burke. Out to the wing. Down to five on the shot clock. Here's Burks. Kicks it to Hayward. He dishes it to Burks. Tries again with the clock winding down, and the layup is good. Burks has got nine. You gotta love the low post offense. That was beautiful. Celtics leading by nine. Rondo kicks to Selinger. 14 feet away, and it's good coming on the assist by Rajan Rondo. Rondo's got his eighth assist in the game. Jazz have gone four of nine from the four so far in the third. Pass to Burks. He kicks to Favors. Pass to Burks from the baseline. Here's Cantor. The third shot of the possession finally falls for him. It seems like they're living off these second chance opportunities. Yeah, they'd probably prefer to just make the initial shot, but if they keep getting these offensive rebounds, I don't think they're gonna worry about it too much as long as they get the point. And it's gonna be two free throws, Drew contact on the shot. Well, it's been said about Rajon Rondo that he's the smartest guy in the room and also might be the most stubborn. He's got a terrific IQ for the game, but he's opinionated. Uh, we've seen him butt heads with coaches in high school, college, and the pros, but that certainly doesn't take away from his greatness. He's a winner, a champion, and a terrific point guard. Well, you're right. It has fueled his rise, whether it was a Kentucky, uh, growing up in Louisville, or, or, or certainly playing with the Boston Celtics. Among some very important players, Hall of Famers like Allen and Garnett, and Paul Pierce, he may have needed a little bit of that just to kind of clear the clutter and show that he could be a leader. Here's what Utah's going with right now. Novak's checked in, and it's Exum in for Burks. Boston also with the sub. Wallace has checked in for Brandon Bass. He's perfect from the line this time. And Rondo has said he'd like to be a coach when his playing days are done, despite his dust-ups with former coach Doc Rivers. You know, he says he studied his ways and learned a lot from him. Definitely a lot of respect there. Now, here's Cantor. Here is Novak. Shot clock at six. And Derek Favors picks up the foul. Derek Favors. That's foul number two That's for him. Second personal foul. Celtics leading by 11. The pass to Green. He's looking for Selinger and finds him. Back to Green. Sullinger with the ball. Cantor covering. Sullinger dishes to Green. And it's going to be two free throws. Drew contact on the shot. And Rondo had said that his knee injury has made him humbler and certainly more appreciative of the NBA and his God-given gifts and not skipping steps in his approach now to the game. 
Yeah, you know, but he did skip a flight with the Celtics last season. <laughs> he stayed in L.A. to celebrate his birthday. That's not exactly how you want to <laughs> go about your work. And the first one drops. Looking at the game for Green, 12 points, and he's added to his totals by picking up three points at the line as well. Yeah, and that's, uh, that's something that's important for him and his team, getting a few extra points, uh, knocking those free throws down, and helping your team any way you can. Both free throws good from Green. Boy, I tell you what, he does not look like your typical big man up there at the line. He has an excellent stroke and a percentage to match. Now here's Burke. Novak kicks to Burke. Shot clock at six. Great D that time from Green. Had a pretty good look at the basket, but defensively they did a nice job rotating, forcing the miss. Rondo passes to Green. And it's blocked. And here is Burke. They set the pick. Out to the right wing. Here's Exum. Offensive rebound. And it goes as the official calls the foul. Count it. He'll shoot one more at the free throw line. Seems like they're on their heels every time defensively because the ball continues to go into the post. Well, if they don't pick up the aggression, things are only going to get worse. And a moment here to take a look at the scoring breakdown for the Celtics. Guys, the passing we've seen from them has been tremendous. Very unselfish. And then how about the scoring they've gotten down on the post, really dominating that lane area? And the free throw, no good. And it's Bradley off the drive. Now Wallace inside. Bradley dishes to Rondo. On the money from 12 feet away. Rondo's got the lead up to 13 now for the Celtics. You know, one aspect of their play today that's really been tight and, and far superior is their passing. Agreed. I mean, you look at the points. I mean, they're getting a lot of baskets off of assists, so the offense really clicking here. And the Jazz call time here. Avery Bradley out of Texas, one of the elite perimeter defenders in the NBA, a guy who can really give you nightmares bringing the ball up the floor. 6'2", but with long arms, and he can defend both guard positions, really pressures the ball well. Now, here's Burke. The feed now to Exum. Out to the right wing. From the arc, six on the shot clock. Here's Cantor. Nails the baby hook. Cantor's got six. Celtics leading by 11. Rondo kicks to Sullivan. The defense yeah, keeps coming up short, just no and solution for Sullinger. He's got 10 points and also a blocked shot. Boy, he's been so good both offensively and defensively, Clark. I I'm not sure which way he's been better. I don't think he's missed a beat at either end. These are his third and fourth free throw attempts of the game. And as a 78% foul shooter last season, he was pretty steady at the line. And the first one at the line is good. Look at the free throw percentage, unblemished since halftime, Clark. That's pretty nice. I'd go farther than that, Steve. How about perfect? Here's what Utah's going with right now. Trevor Booker comes in for Ennis Cantor, and Hood subbed in for Derek Favors. Both free throws good from Selinger. Jazz trail by 13. Now Burke pass to Hood. The dish now to Novak. And he was fouled on the way up. Two free throws now for him. Yeah, the defender draped all over him. Pretty plain and simple. Got him good there. It's his first trip to the line. Steve Novak at the line for two.
First one falls for him. Olenek, he's checked in for Boston. Young comes in for Avery Bradley. And so he makes both from the line. He's a dead eye at the line, fellas. Just call him automatic. He doesn't miss many of those. Rondo with it. Eight points for him. Young outside. Olenek sets a screen for Young. Busts the J after the KG pass fake. Young's got his second bucket. Very effective screen to set up the jumper. That was the key to that play. Burke, the pass to Hood. There's the pick. Shoots off the screen. Jump shot is good. Hood, two points. Hood's got five now. The screenplay worked ideally there, and I'm not talking about the screenplay you see in a movie theater. <laughs> <laughs> Gave him more than enough room to get that shot off. Green. Basket is good. The assist from Rondo. And that's 15 points for Jeff Green. He's created some good opportunities for himself and made the most of them. Pass to Hood. Here's Burke. Pass to Hood. Six to shoot. Nice ball movement by Utah. That one's in there. The Boston lead has cut down to just 10 points on the bucket from Burke. The defender there in the neighborhood, but not quite close enough. Good shot. And here's Young. Outside Rondo, back to Young. Feeds to Green. Shot from 12. Almost, but it rolls out. Well, he's not necessarily a strong inside presence, but he needs to polish those chances off. Well, you know, head coach Brad Stevens of the Celtics is coaching a much different game in the pros than we see in college. I mean, a lot of differences, but if anybody can make that transition, I really think he's certainly the guy that could. He's bright, he's hardworking, he communicates well, he's innovative, showed that innovativeness at the college level. So I think he's got all of the ingredients to become a college coach who is successful as an NBA coach. They're in the position they're in right now, thanks in no small part to the show that he's putting on in this period. Exum kicks to Novak. This is to Burke. Takes it off the glass. Burke's got five points now this quarter. And Coach Stevens, analytically minded, and Butler had a full-time statistician as one of his assistants. Yeah, very new school in his approach. You might expect that from such a young guy, still in his 30s. Of course, he also needs to connect with his players. You know, and he's doing well. Despite the losses, the players really enjoyed playing for Stevens, and I think he's going to be an excellent coach. Shots good from Young. They haven't been as aggressive from outside as they were in the first half. They're playing smart with the lead. I like that. They're being very selective and deliberate in their offense. Um, that's a good strategy when you're on top. Now, here's Exum. He's got five. Novak dishes to Burke. And there's the pass to Hood. It's stolen by Green. Right side, Green. Outside, Rondo. He feeds it to Young. Now, here's Green. 17 points in the game. Five on the clock. And stolen by Hood. Fifty-eight seconds left to play in the third. Burke, the pass to Hood. Exum kicks to Hood. Just five on the clock. Out left to the wing. Fires the three. That's in. The Celtic lead is cut to just nine on the basket from Exum. Their three-point percentage has taken a big leap up since the start of the second half. They're starting to find the range. Steve, the lasers are starting to do their thing. That's going to be the ticket for them the rest of the way. Now, here is Young. He's got six. Kicks it to Olenek. Booker pulls it in. Booker's got six rebounds in the game. Three seconds separate the shot clock and game clock. Burke 
Dishes to exit. Novak kicks to Hood. Now the feed to Booker. The baseline J. And the rebound goes to Rajan Rondo. Rondo's got his fourth rebound with that last one here tonight. That misses would have counted had it gone in. The third quarter comes to a close. Celtics out in front, leading by nine. And after a quick break, we're going to come right back with the start of the fourth quarter. Can I have it like that? Celtics leading by nine, and a look at the five for the Celtics to start the fourth quarter. They've got Evan Turner, Thornton out there with Smart, then it's Jared Selinger, and it's Bass in at the horse. And Turner throws it down. Well, now they're just going to town on him. Yeah, you'd think these defenders would have done a little more to put a stop to that stuff, Kevin, but so far, no go. Well, a phenomenal aerial assault there, fellas. Now, here's Exum. Sullinger passes to Smart. Sullinger inside, defended by Hayward, and it's blocked. There's a good screen. Shoots off the screen, and he hits the jump shot. Hayward, two points. One minute now into this fourth quarter. Now Smart. He dishes it to Thornton. Clock at six. He kicks it to Smart. They get it again. Here's Turner. Bangs home the trifecta. Boy, he found the perfect spot behind the arc there. Big gap in the defense. A little over a minute and a half of the fourth quarter gone now. Exum with it. Burks dishes to Evans. Nice ball movement by Utah. Here's Cantor. And it's going to be two free throws. Drew contact on the shot. Dennis Cantor was the third overall pick back in 2011, drafted out of Kentucky, where he actually never played a game there due to ineligibility. Uh, but uh, he was a bit of a gamble because of that. I'm not sure he's completely delivered on his lofty expectations yet. And for Cantor last season, Clark, a big uptick in minutes, but his productivity actually regressed somewhat. Well, Kevin, the shooting percentages went down, um, as did his blocks and steals. But remember now, he's only 22 years old, and it's, all, it's not always a straight line of progression for players. There's all, there are occasional detours before you bounce back up to that next plateau. And the Jazz making a change here. Favors has checked in. No good on the second free throw. Dennis Cantor, originally from Turkey. Some real promise offensively. Scores well on that left block, and he Marcus, does a nice job on the offensive boards as well. At times, he's even shown the ability to step out and space the floor. It'll be interesting to see how his game develops. Here's Exum. Marcus Smart picking up that last basket. Here's Cantor. Sullinger with the rebound. Zellinger's got his eighth rebound here tonight. And Cantor, not a big leaper or shot block, but his strength serves him well defensively. Yeah, he's a good post defender, Kevin, because of those attributes. He holds his ground and has the length to bother and challenge shots. Jazz trail by 14. Exum kicks to Favors. Passes to Hayward. Inside to Favors. Out to Hayward. Just five on the clock. The dish to Cantor, all alone, and he gets it to go. We're seeing him bring that shooting percentage up now, guys. The first half was a struggle for him. Celtics leading by 12. Sullinger with a screen for Smart. 
Sullinger inside. He's against Cantor. Sullinger with the bucket. We've seen a noticeable improvement out of him since halftime. He didn't have a whole lot working in the first half. Utah calls timeout. Well, Jared Sullinger slipped in the 2012 draft over concerns about his back. He ended up missing the latter half of that rookie season when he had to have back surgery. Despite his health issues, when he's been on the court, he's shown a lot of promise. Bradley's check in for Marcus Thornton. Let's go quickly over to Doris Burke for an update. Guys, I was able to listen in on what Quinn Schneider was going over with his team. He got after them and told them to turn up the intensity, saying, we've put ourselves in a corner, and now we've got to fight our way out. Show me what you have. Let's see if we've got what it takes, guys. Always great to hear from you, Doris. Now, here's Exum. Cantor, the pass to Exum. Hayward against Turner, and it's good. Gordon Hayward's, Hayward's got points. nine points here in the second half. And Sollinger with a ground-bound game. Even before his back troubles, his game is based on strength and skill. Yeah, no question. He's got that wide frame, able to carve out space inside. You know, he's a good rebounder. He's got a soft touch. Boston really tried to help him become a three-point shooter as well last year. So he's slowly expanding his game. Very effective screen to set up the jumper. That was the key to that play. Jazz trail by 14. And here's Exum. Rebounded by Smart. Bradley kicks to Turner. Burks with the steal. Hayward against Turner. Pass to Burks. Second shot opportunity. And Favors finishes it off. Great game for him. Double double now. 10 points and 10 rebounds. Celtics leading by 12. Here's Smart. And again, it's Boston converting. Smart, smart. And they have to mix it up defensively. That was just too easy. Utah's gotten the three-point bug tonight. They've taken 15 shots outside the arc. They're 6 of 15. Favors with a screen on Bradley. Now, here's Exum. Pass to Burks. Shot clock at 6. And he gets it to go. Now, smart. Down low. Bradley dishes to smart. Back to Bradley. Shoots from the line. There's the block. They retain possession. Kept alive. Sellinger misses off the right iron. Jazz trail by 12. Exum with it. Feeds it to Favors. Wants to get it to Burks and does. And again, it's Utah. Celtics leading by 10. Here's Smart. Dishes it to Turner. Inside, here's Bradley, and it's good. Fought through contact, gets the shot, he'll go to the free throw line. That's his first personal foul. Terrific play right there. Great strength to finish through the hip. That's how you do it, the bump and the bucket. Green is checked in for the Celtics. Avery Bradley, shooting one. That free throw good from Bradley. Well, I think the NBA is in a great place with all the young talent in the league right now. We see players coming in, not just with potential, but a willingness to learn and, and work. It's really impressive to see. Now, here's Exum. The pass to Cantor. Inside to Favors. No stopping him there. Jams it in as he's fouled. A chance now for a three-point play. It's going to be on Brandon Bass. Looking at the game for Derek Favors, 11 rebounds and also an assist. Shooting one. Celtics have gone 7 of 13 from the field here in the fourth. Now here's Smart. He's covered closely. So he gets the whistle. Contact on the way up and two shots coming up. 
Yeah, yeah he got whacked. Shouldn't be much debate on that one. Yeah, that was as straightforward as it gets, guys. Taking two shots. That free throw, no good. And he's good on the second. Here's Exum. Guys, there's still time for them to make a run. But the margin of error is history. Well, yeah, there's not much margin at all, Clark. I mean, they, they, yeah, they can't yeah. afford to waste any more possessions. And now both of these clubs really in a groove here. Already a high-scoring game, but it has become an offensive showcase down the stretch. Sullinger with a screen for Smart. Green inside the three-point line, Jump loses green. the defender with the screen and drills the jumper. Wow, such a steady hand. He's the one responsible for getting them this late lead. Can't argue with that at all, Steve. His shooting percentage has been off the charts. Walking That's his fourth foul. foul. I'm Brandon sure he recognizes Bass. the situation That's because number five foul. would put him in a rough, Team tough foul. spot. And so it's Utah here with the ball. They trail by 11. Here's Burks. And Utah again with the bucket. Brandon Bass. That's his fourth personal foul. And here's Smart. Sullinger with a screen for Smart. And he feeds it to Green. Right side Green kicks it to Smart. Lock at six. Hayward against Green. The offensive rebound. And they're going to count the bucket and send him to the line. It could be a three-point play. That's a battle they haven't been winning today, guys. Their work on the glass has to improve. And that's not the only thing that's gone against them. Burke, he's checked in for Exum. Austin also with the sub. Rajon Rondo's checked in for Smart. Free throw drops for Bass. Brandon Bass now in his 10th season out of LSU. Pick and pop, power forward. That mid-range shot is a strength of his game, and he's really improved defensively the last couple of years as well. Now, here's Burks. Second shot opportunity. That's in, and the Celtic yeah, lead is cut yeah. down now to just 10 on the basket from Favors. How about the field goal percentage shooting this half, guys? It's gone through the roof. Outside Rondo. Sullinger with a screen for Rondo. And here's Green outside. No luck. And it's Utah the other way. And Bass is much more of an offensive-minded big man. At 6'8", he's not a big-time defender or rebounder. His job really is to space the floor and, and put points on the board. The drive by Green. Utah shooting it up around 51%. They're getting good looks. And Favors gets it to go in on the assist by Burke. Favors got 15 points in just the second half. Boston leading by eight. And Brandon Bass earning the nickname No Pass Bass. This is team more career turnovers than assists. Yeah, but that's his role, Kevin. You know, when he's open, knock it down. And what I like about Bass is that he has improved his defense considerably. The last couple of years with Doc Rivers in Boston, uh, that was something that Doc really emphasized. So here's Burks. 
Burke, the pass to Fabers. And he finishes nicely on the way. Favors got 13 points in just this quarter. They've got to continue to put pressure on the defense by probing inside. That's what's really working for them. And when you're doing the job they are inside, it takes pressure off the perimeter guys. Now here's Bradley. Sullinger with a screen for Bradley. Three-pointer. That's good. Three. And the Celtics Avery lead by nine. Yeah, and he had to get that shot off quickly because uh, the defense was all over him. Yeah, that's the key, Steve, the quick trigger. Any hesitation, and that shot gets blocked. Here is Hayward. The feed now to Burks. For the three. Hayward can hit. Celtics leading by nine. Jeff Green on the wing. Upside Rondo. And he gets it to go, hitting off the back of the rim. And he's now got the double-double. 10 points and 10 assists. Utah calls timeout. They're behind by 11. 136 left in the fourth quarter. One thirty-six left in the fourth quarter. Over to the wing. Hayward kicks to Cantor. So he gets the whistle. Contact on the way up and two shots coming up. That's his second personal Shooting for Utah. Gordon Hayward, two shots. Good on the first, and that brings them to within 10. Hayward hits them both. Now a timeout called by Boston. They're up by nine. 125 left to play here in the fourth. It's Bradley on the wing. Burke's covering. Bradley can't get it to go. It's stolen by Sullinger. And he gets it to go. Sullinger's got 14 points here in the second half. Well, it's been a tale of two halves, hasn't it, guys? After a terrible first half, he's really picking it up. Passes it to Hayward. Here's Burks. Traps in the tray. Burks has got nine points now in the quarter. Well, this quarter has gone awfully well for him. It seems like every chance he's gotten, he's pretty much converted. Outside Bradley. Right side Rondo. Shot clock at six. Got it. Good job in the low post. And the Celtics lead by ten. They didn't take their time wrapping this game up. They pretty much did it in a hurry. Yeah, they had a nice spurt to polish this one off. Here's Favors, and that is good. Darren Favors! And stolen by Burke. And I think this is going to be too much to overcome, Clark. What do you think? All the sand in the hourglass is gone, and I agree with you. Now here's Rondo. He dishes it to Bass. That's tipped, and that's out of bounds. Boston will retain possession. 12 seconds of the shot clock, 12. Substitution on the court.
17 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Six on the shot clock. It's deflected. Oh, in it. He kicks to Thornton. Now Young inside. Back to Thornton. So we see Boston get the win here. They pulled off this win, Clark, with respectable performances on both ends of the floor. Yeah, I think it was just really a nice overall effort, Kevin. And so now we'll go down to Doris Burke, who's standing by live with our Jordan player of the game. Doris? Rajan, what was the key in tonight's win from an offensive perspective and how you got going? Ball movement. Um, started with stops defensively. I think I got a pretty good rhythm. I made some shots. And I was played together, shared the ball. When Rondo makes shots, look out, guys. Kevin, back to you. Thank you, Doris, for that. And now for Clark Kellogg, Steve Kerr, and Doris Burke. This is Kevin Harlan saying, see you next time as we present our Jordan player of the game, Rajan.